these, your, your careers, uh, just reading about each of your experiences really warrant uh, significant uh, admiration and appreciation from the committee. I want to spend my time with Mr. McIntyre and Mr. Uh, Nitschke, um, talking about PEPFAR. Um, Eswatini um, has the highest HIV adult prevalence rate in the world at 25.9%. And girls and young women aged 15 to 24 account for almost half of new HIV infections. Lesotho has the second highest prevalence rate in the world at 19, adult prevalence rate at 19.3%. And the good news is that rate is a good bit lower than it was 10 years ago. In 2013, the rate was 24.6%. We marked the 20th anniversary of PEPFAR in 2023. We're in a short-term mode of extending a year at a time. PEPFAR has saved countless lives in Eswatini and Lesotho. That reduction in Lesotho in, in particular demonstrates that uh, and has supported significant progress in the treatment and prevention of HIV AIDS. There's been some debate here about what we do with PEPFAR, but can you just describe generally the importance of PEPFAR funding to these two nations that where you will be serving? Thank you, Senator, for the question. Uh, PEPFAR is our leading investment in Eswatini. Um, I've had almost 10 years of working with the PEPFAR program. I met what I said in my testimony. It changes lives. It saves lives. I did want to thank you for your comment regarding women and children. I think sometimes that needs more focus. I think that's where we can do a better job in Eswatini. I absolutely pledge, if I'm confirmed, PEPFAR will be one of my priorities. It's, it's an incredibly important program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nisky. Uh, thank you, Senator. Yeah, I, I, uh, echoing my, my colleague, that the importance of PEPFAR has been transformative. It may be the single greatest achievement of U.S. foreign uh, development assistance in the 21st century. It has transformed and saved millions and millions of lives around the world. Our investments in, in Lesotho are um, on par as the largest investment that we make as a government, and it's transformative. Echoing my colleagues' comments about the importance of addressing young girls and women in particular as an issue, but also I think it's important to note that when you think about these programs, engaging with youth, youth who do not remember what the pandemic was like 15, 20 years ago, those who don't remember the, the, the coffin industry, the businesses that were taking off. Uh, working in Africa in that time period, I remember uh, having a funeral to attend on behalf of my local staff routinely because we lost people that we were working with. Uh, we didn't talk about what it was then. We didn't necessarily know or the stigma was there. That's changed, and that's changed because of the investments that the U.S. taxpayer, this committee, this Congress has made on the continent. And I think we should be very proud of that. Thank you. I think it's an amazing bipartisan achievement, and you know, there's some controversy around reauthorization attending to different points of view about abortion, but PEPFAR isn't about abortion at all. Um, and I hope we can resolve it. One, one last question on this topic. Um, we, we, we are in a mode where we sort of do it a year at a time, uh, but you can't really count on it long term. Talk about the difference in a PEPFAR program that you can count on over a number of years and one that's always kind of on the verge of a, some controversy about whether it's going to be extended just year by year. Senator, thank you for the question. You are correct uh, that it is important to be able to plan out. Health outcomes take time. Um, you don't immediately get to the 95, 95, 95 goals right away. And so it, it is helpful to be able to plan out. I think the key with the program is a continued investment and engagement by the embassy in support of it. And it is a cross-agency program. So I think that's also a, a powerful symbol as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Senator. In terms of in terms of the long term, it's important to also think about the fact that we have global partners. We're the largest investor in the Global Fund as well, providing grant assistance to most of the nations that engage in, in PEPFAR programs. There are different ways we can talk about sustainability. It's a, certainly an element that we should be engaging with our host governments with, and this would be a, a top priority of mine if confirmed to work with the government of the Kingdom of Lesotho to find a better pathway long term so that those investments can be met. The, 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 the goal of achieving epidemic control is that there are less new infections to to worry about within the broader populations. And so uh, hopefully with those investments we make over time, we're able to focus on prevention rather than treatment. Thank you. Um, thank you both for your commitment. And just for the audience here, anybody watching, Mr. McIntyre mentioned the 95, 95, 95. And just to clarify that for everyone, the, the UN AIDS 95, 95, 95 target is this. By 2030, 95% of HIV infected individuals will be diagnosed and know their HIV status. 
of whom 95% are to be receiving antiretroviral therapy, of whom 95% are to have achieved viral suppression. That's the target that we're shooting for in the global battle against HIV AIDS, and the U.S. investment is critical to reaching those laudatory targets. So thank you for your testimony. I hand it back, Madam Chair. Thank you. Senator Rickett. Great. Thank you.